Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat, and we're going to be discussing the supply and profit and loss. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you'll get access to this chart that we're about to talk about, as well as a lot of other charts that you generally see me cover in the videos. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, I will say that on-chain analysis is dubious at best because it could be theoretically manipulated in some ways. Despite that, some of the on-chain indicators still give a pretty good signal, all things considered. One of my favorite on-chain indicators is the Bitcoin percentage of supply in profit and loss. The reason I like this one is just because of how cyclical it looks. The ebb and flow of this indicator. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the Bitcoin price on here so we can just focus on, on these two indicators, the supply and loss and the supply and profit. And again, excuse my voice, I do have a cold. So I'm <coughs> trying to get through it. But what you'll notice is that there's a clear ebb and flow to the bear markets and the bull markets, right? And the bear markets and the bull and the bear and the bull and the bear. What you may notice is that they tend to cross at a certain point throughout the bear market. And in fact, in every single bear market, the Bitcoin supply and profit and loss, these lines, they cross. Here in 2011 and in 2014, 2015 and in 2018, 2019. And they've started crossing again here in late 2022. Now, it can be somewhat difficult to make out what's going on because, right, there's just a lot of, a lot of crunched up data here. So, so when you zoom out, right, it... it, it still leaves something to be desired as to know like you know how accurate can it be at, at calling bottoms and, and that sort of stuff if you apply moving <coughs> if <coughs> sorry if you apply moving average to it this is the 30-day moving average the 30-day sma of the bitcoin supply and profit and loss and what you'll notice is that historically they have always crossed before the bottom was in, right? This is the 30-day moving average of, the, of these indicators. Crossed here in October of 2011. The bottom was not in until November. And then here in 2015, crossed in December of 2014. The bottom came a month later in January of 2015. Continuing on, you can see they crossed here. Early December, the 30-day SMA, the bottom was in by mid-December, a couple more weeks. Haven't crossed yet, right? And I mean, that's just what it is, right? Again, I don't control what it is. It just is what it is. And my argument throughout the summer, right, when everyone was calling June the bottom, my argument has been, well, not everyone, right, but a lot of people. My argument is, has simply been, you know, a lot of these indicators that have given clear signal in the past occurred during a secular stock market bull market. So why should we assume that this is the time that they won't when the stock market, when the overall stock market has actually been in a bear market and the Federal Reserve is no longer playing ball with us, right? Raising interest rates, rolling off assets from their balance sheet, kind of seems like they want to put us into a recession because they want to get inflation back down. One of the best ways to get inflation back down get us into a recession. It's a pretty good, pretty good way to get inflation back down. So I look at this chart and say, you know, given what history tells us, the market cycle bottom for Bitcoin, if you want to call it that, historically does not occur until after the 30-day SMA of this Bitcoin supply and profit and losses crossed. And, you know, I did a video on this a few months ago, right? When we were actually in the summer, 
and talking about how we really need to see these things cross before we can get so confident about calling for a major bottom. And, you know, the common retort to this was, well, you know, you know, Bitcoin's going to, you know, going to leave everyone behind and, um, and the indicators, you know, you're being too greedy. But at the end of the day, I mean, 17.5 was not the bottom. And, and now we're only sitting about, you know, just about $1,000 or so above the current local bottom at 15.5. Bitcoin's currently at about 16.6 or so. So, <laughs> so I look at this chart and it suggests to me that there is a decent chance here that until these cross, the bottom might just not be in. You know, look, bear markets suck. They absolutely suck. The hardest part, though, is not the price drawdown. That's not the hardest part, you know? And if you don't believe me, think of it like this. Imagine if Bitcoin, after its peak in mid-November of 2021, imagine if it just went down to whatever the bottom is going to be in one day, right? Let's say it had an 80% correction or 85%, whatever it's, you know, whatever it's going to end up being in one day. That wouldn't have been that painful. I mean, it would have sucked for that one day, but then everyone probably would have YOLO'd back in after 80% down. And if that was the bottom, everyone would have, would have been happy ever since, right? In crypto, as I've said before, you know, crypto investors are very forgiving. An altcoin could be down 99%, but as long as it goes up 5% the next day, investors are happy, right? They're like little puppy wagging their tail. So I'll say again, I mean, you know, the price drawdown from the all-time high is not the difficult part. It's the time it takes to experience it. Because not only do you need price-based capitulation in a bear market, you need time-based capitulation. Where people throw in the towel and say enough is enough. They will no longer continue to engage in these counter-trend rallies. And once enough people have been shaken out, then the market can heal. But I'm just saying, you know, price-based capitulation is one thing. And going 80% plus down from the all-time high, it always sucks. The hardest part is time-based capitulation. Because everyone wants to just put their money in, right? Just want to put your money in. When in reality, cash is king in 2022. I mean, so far, I mean, I... I you know, we've been saying this all year, basically. I, I mean, I don't really think that we can look back at 2022 and say, well, cash wasn't king. I mean, inflation sucked, but it's better than losing 90% in altcoin, right? Or even or even throwing it all in Bitcoin and watching that go down the entire year. So, you know, I look at this chart and I say, well, historically, the bottom's not in until after they cross. They haven't crossed yet, not the 30-day SMA. Now, you could look at some shorter-term moving averages like the 14-day and see a very similar story, right? Bottom's not in till after they cross. Happened time and time again. Haven't crossed yet, right? Even if you take a 14-day moving average, they still haven't crossed. They're getting close. Still haven't crossed. So the argument goes, again, is that until they cross, bottom callers run the risk of going up against this metric, which has a pretty good track record. Now, I'm not saying that bottom callers have to be wrong. They've been wrong so far this year. And this metric would just simply suggest makes sense to be conservative, right? Now, even if the bottom is in, there's still a good chance that we're going to go sideways for a while. So these are these, you know, there, there's plenty of indicators that have kept me conservative throughout this year. Plenty of indicators, right? And we said back in June... And July and August, we you know we put out plenty of videos, the case for the bears and whatnot, and, and talked about the bullish indicators versus the bearish indicators. But as I've maintained, in a risk-off environment, when we're likely dealing with an upcoming recession in 2023, it would make sense to me that a lot of these indicators that were built during a secular bull market should at the very least provide a signal during a potential stock market, bear market, that might last longer than any bear market that Bitcoin has experienced. Like, so like Bitcoin has never really been around for a bear market in the stock market. If you think about it, it came out of the financial crisis from 08, 09. But since then, the stock market hasn't experienced a bear market. 
Not, not in a real sense. I mean, maybe short bear markets, but <coughs> not in these longer bear markets. Just hasn't experienced it. So again, I, I think like, you know, makes sense to be conservative. And you can go look at like 50 day moving averages of this stuff as well. And I think you'll notice a similar pattern, right? The 50 day SMA of these two indicators crossed before the bottom was in in 2011. They crossed here in 2014 before the bottom was in in 2015. And they also crossed right at the bottom, it looks like. Let's see, let's get it, let's get it exactly. Maybe even one day after or so. I guess it depends on if you take the, uh, the, the daily close or the wicks. It's like if you were to go look at Bitcoin's bottom in uh, 2018, we get the exact day here. We're not gonna, you know, hand wave this. Bottom was December fifteenth. It's right here. So you can see even the fifty day SMA, it 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 crossed one day after the bottom in twenty in twenty eighteen. Right. I mean, right now they're they're still pretty far apart, these two. So again, I mean, you know, my my general speculation remains unchanged. I mean, I, I think that these these time-based capitulations and whatnot do have merit, and, and it's what keeps me from, it's what kept, kept me from putting too much um, credibility into, into the potential June bottom, right? Is these indicators, right? These more conservative indicators that say, you know what? Everyone likes to jump the gun halfway through the bear market, just like they did in 2018, just like I did in 2018. I thought 6K was the bottom, and I was wrong. You know, I mean, I was wrong in 2018. 6K was not the bottom, 3K was. We dropped 50% from that level. And we also spoke a lot about how, you know, there are a lot of similarities going into the end of the year, just like there were in 2018, right? I mean, you know, we, we went, I mean, this was bottom in June. Higher lows, capitulation starts in November, right? Bottom in June, higher lows, capitulation starts in November. It, it's the same thing, right? Like it's, we don't have to overcomplicate it. It really has just been the same thing. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this indicator. Again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium if you wanna follow it in real time and, or at least on a daily basis. And we also have a lot of other indicators as well. We'll have that sale running through the end of the month. And we also have three weekly videos, Telegram Alerts channel, trading communicators, et cetera. So make sure you guys check it out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. See you guys next time. Bye.